Hi guys, this is Ivy from Wamplay here to show you how to fill out the first round of the Paycheck Protection Program form powered directly by Lendio to hopefully help you get that first draw PPP. Let's go ahead and get started to make things easy. So first things first, you're going to end up on a page that looks just like mine where it's going to ask you for your business name in this particular case. I'm using actually my first and last name. This particular video is going to be focused on non-employer businesses, things like sole proprietors, um, independent contractors, etc. So in this particular case, my business name is in fact my legal name. Then it's going to ask for my first name, last name, email address, and a phone number. After that, we simply click apply now. It takes a couple of seconds and then it's going to take you to a page that looks just like mine. Where? It's going to ask you to be able to create a password. This is really important. Make sure this is a password that you're going to be able to remember very easily and that you can access at any point in time. That way, if you do have to go backwards to be able to enter in information at a later date, etc., you can get into your application. After that, it asks you, let's get started on the right path. Are you applying for your second PPP loan? Yes or no. In this particular case, this entire video is going to be dedicated to non-employer businesses who are going through the first draw application flow. So we're going to go ahead and click no, and then we're going to press next. After that, it says getting questions, and it's going to ask us a whole bunch of information. So our business name, our business address. In this particular case, please make sure that you select your address from the drop down. That way you can try to be able to move forward in the rest of the application. If you do not select the business address in the drop down, you will not be able to move forward. A DBA name, if that's applicable for you in your particular business, or do business as name. Your business start date, so when you actually officially started your business in question. Your business type. So that could be a sole proprietorship, partnership, C-Core, S-Core, LLC, etc. In my case, we're going to go with independent contractor. And then it's going to ask for a social security number. As always, any and all information that I show you guys directly in the system is 100% falsified. That way we can try to make it as easy and as close to your actual experiences as possible. After we enter in our social, then it's going to ask us for our industry. So we're going to go ahead and type in marketing... You want to use broad strokes with this to be able to try to find the actual um, type of service that you're using. Make sure you, again, select it from the drop down. You're using this instead of your NAICS code so that they can try to classify your business. After that, it's going to ask you for the total number of employees, including owners. In our case, we're an independent contractor. It's one employee. After that, it's going to ask you the question, has the applicant received an SBA economic injury disaster loan between January 31st, 2020 and April 3rd, 2020? Yes or no? We're going to go ahead and click no. Then, again, if you had the economic injury disaster loan, you're going to go ahead and enter that directly here into the system. Enter no. We're going to go ahead and add in our average monthly payroll, making sure that we enter that directly into the system to the best of our ability. And then it says you entered in $5,800 for your average monthly payroll. What year did you use to calculate your average payroll? In my case, we're going to use 2019. However, you can either use 2019 or 2020, depending on how you did your taxes. Hmm. After that, it's going to ask you for your loan amount. The maximum amount that you can qualify for is fourteen five. So we're going to go ahead and enter in five, uh, fourteen five because it's the total amount that we can actually qualify for based on the loan. After that, it's going to ask us for the loan purpose. So that could be for payroll costs, rent and mortgage interest, utilities, covered operations expenditures, covered property damage, covered supplier costs, covered worker protection expenditures, or other. Whatever you're planning on using the Paycheck Protection Program loan for, go ahead and click the ones that are applicable here, and then press Next. After that, it's going to take you to a page that looks just like mine, where it says Business Questions. So, we're going to answer yes or no to the following questions. Is the applicant or any owner of the applicant presently suspended, debarred, proposed for debarment, declared ineligible, voluntarily excluded from participation in this transaction by any federal department or agency, or presently involved in any bankruptcy? Yes or no. Has the applicant, any owner of the applicant, or any, bi any business owned or controlled by any of them ever obtained a direct or guaranteed loan from the SBA that resulted in a loss to the government? No. Is the applicant or any owner of the applicant an owner of any other business or have common management with any other business? Yes or no. 
is the applicant, if an individual or any individual owning 20% or more of the equity of the applicant presently incarcerated for any felony, present subjected to any indictment, criminal information, arraignment, or other means by which formal cr criminal charges are brought in any jurisdiction? No. Within the last five years for any felony involving fraud, bribery, embezzlement, or false statement in a loan application or application for federal financial assistance, or within the last year for any felony has the applicant or any owner of the applicant been convicted, pleaded guilty, pleaded no look contender, or been placed on any form of a parole or probation? No. Is the United States the principal place of residency for all employees included in the applicant's payroll calculation? Yes. Is the applicant a franchise listed in the SBA's directory? No. Is the applicant a franchise? No. And then go ahead and press next. Give it a couple of seconds, and then it's going to ask for owner information. Do you or any individual own 20% or more of the business? Yes. What is your ownership, ownership percentage, indirect or direct? Make sure that's correct, and then press next. Give it a couple of seconds, and then it's going to ask you for documentation. As you can see, we're almost done. So we press next. And we're going to upload a whole lot of information. So first, we're going to upload a full color picture or copy of the front and back of your driver's license. So I'm going to go right here. I'm going to go to my documents. I'm going to find my driver's license and press open. I'm going to go right here. Go to my documents. Find my driver's license back and press open. Now I have the front and back of my driver's license directly into the system. Next, it's going to ask for a voided check. Please make sure that it is uh, has the same account number that matches your bank statements. That's very important, and it's how you're going to be receiving your information. I have mine marked as blank check in the system to make it very easy for me to be able to find. After you verify that you have your front, back, and voided check, go ahead and press next. Then it's going to ask you for your business detail types. Do you have W-2 employees? We're an independent contractor, so we're going to click no and press next. Give it a couple of seconds, and then it's going to say upload full 2019 tax return. You're going to upload your full 2019 tax return must include all pages. Let's get to go ahead. Let's go browse our files. We're going to find our files themselves. That's going to be this one right here. We're going to press open. It's our full 2019. Make sure that you've got that correct in your system. It's your full 2019 tax return, and then press next. After that... You're going to be ask, uh, they're going to ask for one of the following to upload the 2020 documents, either a February 2020 business bank statement or a customer invoice from February 2020. In my case, I'm going to go ahead and do a February 2020 business bank statement, but you can use either. So you're going to click Browse Files. We're going to go to my folder that says Bank Statements, and we're going to go right here to where it says February of 2020 right there and we're going to press open. That's my bank statement of February 2020. Verify that's correct and we're going to press next. After that it's going to ask us for demographic information. So it'll say first name, last name, then it's going to ask for your position, your veteran status, so your position, so self-employed individual, contractor, sole proprietor, general partner, or an independent contractor, veteran position, we're not a vet, we're not a veteran, your gender, your race, and your ethnicity, make sure that you fill those out to the best of your ability, and then go ahead and press next. And then after that, it's going to ask you to sign and consent, that you're going to be making the following certifications by clicking the yes box next to all of them. Let's go through them together. First, that the applicant was in operation on February 15th, 2020, has not permanently closed, and was either an eligible self-employed individual, independent contractor, or sole proprietorship with no employees, or had employees for whom it paid salaries. Yes. Current economic uncertainty makes this loan request necessary. Yes. The funds will be used to retain workers and maintain payroll. Yes. I understand that loan forgiveness will be provided for the sum of the documented payroll costs, covered mortgage interest payments, covered rent payments, covered utilities, covered operations expenditures, covered property damage, covered supplier costs, and covered worker protections. Yes. The applicant has not and will not receive another loan under the Paycheck Protection Program loan. Yes. The applicant has not and will not receive a shuttered venue operator grant. Yes. Scrolling down. The president, vice president, head of executive department or member of Congress or the spouse of such person as determined under applicable common law does not directly or indirectly hold a controlling interest in the applicant. Yes. The applicant is not an issuer, the securities of which are listed on the exchange registered on a national securities exchange. Yes. 
I further certify that the information provided in this application and the information provided in all supporting documents and forms is true and accurate in all material respects. Yes. And then last but not least, I note that the lender will confirm the eligible loan amount using the required documents submitted that you understand, acknowledge, and agree that the lender can share your tax information that you have provided with the SBA's authorized representatives, including authorized representatives of the SBA's Office of the Inspector General. Go ahead and click Yes. After that, it's going to ask you for some applicant authorization. That's going to be your first name, last name. Then it's going to ask for your birthday. Then it's going to ask for your gender, your social security number, and then it's going to ask for your home address. Please make sure that you're entering your home address. If they are in fact the same, that's totally okay between your home address and your work address. However, if they are, if they are not, it is going to flag it at the very end. After that, it's going to have you do your title. In that particular case, that's independent contractor. And then it's going to ask you to certify the following. That you have read the statements included in the form, including the statements required by law. The applicant is eligible to receive a loan under the rules in effect at this point in time. The applicant, together with its affiliates as independent contractor, self-employed individual, or sole proprietor with no employees, if not a housing cooperative, eligible 501c6 organization, or eligible destination marketing organization, employs no greater than 500 employees, or if applicable, the size standard in the number of employees. That you'll comply whenever applicable with the civil rights and other limitations in this loan. That all loan proceeds will be only used for business-related purposes as specified in the loan application and consistent with the Paycheck Protection Program rules. That you understand that VSB encourages the purchase to the extent feasible of American-made equipment and products. That the applicant is not engaged in any activity that's illegal. That the idle loan received by the applicant of the Small Business Act between January 31st and April 20th and April 3rd was for a purpose other than paying payroll. For applicants who are individuals, you authorize the SBA to request criminal information, and you've read and received the Paycheck Protection Program disclosures, and by submitting, you agree to Lendio's um, electronic record and signature agreement. After you clicked all of that, click I, click I acknowledge and accept the terms of this loan, and click sign and submit. After that, like I mentioned before, if your home address and business address are the same. That's totally okay. It just says, we notice that you're, that you listed your business and home address is the same. After that, go ahead and press confirm and submit. It takes a couple seconds. And then it says you've successfully submitted your application. Go to my portal. All you'll do is click go to my portal. And this is where you're going to go um, as soon as you start logging back into your application. This way you can see the current status of the application in question. You can see whether or not they have any questions, comments, or concerns. What's going to happen from here is the lender is going to reach out to you directly via email with, if they have questions, comments, concerns, or if they need any additional information from you moving forward. However, if you do run into any questions about this application, feel free to contact us directly.